So will you please turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians 6 and Hebrews chapter 11. Today we're going to preach on the shield of faith, the shield of faith. Hebrews 6, uh, sorry, Ephesians 6 uh, and Hebrews 11. So we'll read Ephesians 6 verse 10 first and just keep your finger on Hebrews 11. So it says in, in, in Ephesians 6, 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 32. Hebrews 11 and verse 32. And it says, What more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in the fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Let's pray together. Father, Lord, we ask you to bless your word today. We pray, oh, Father, Lord, that you would be here with us. We ask you to pour out your spirit on this gathering here today, oh, God. Lord, we long to have greater fellowship with you, oh, God. And, Lord, help this preacher to preach Christ, oh, God. Lord, we long to see our Savior, oh, God, in all his fullness, oh, God, and his train might fill this temple, oh, God. We pray for the glory of God to be manifested here in our midst, Lord, not with strange fire, oh, God, Lord, but real change hearts, O oh God, and lives, O oh God. Lord, intervene, O oh God, here today. And Lord, encourage us, O oh God. Convict us, O oh God. Deal with us, O oh God. Be with us, O oh Father. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Saints, you'll remember last week I was preached on the, a more excellent sacrifice. Again, from Hebrews 11, preaching about Abel, that man of faith, the first man in that list of different men of faith listed in Hebrews chapter 11. We heard that how, yes, he ended up in a grave, but he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and God had respect of the gifts that he was doing, and ultimately, him being dead yet speak. Saints of God, that wasn't by him killing a lamb. Many people have killed or have killed animals and offer it to different gods. The Muslims do it all the time with their halal meat. Killing an animal is not sufficient. The Bible says in Hebrews, the blood of bulls and goats is not sufficient to take away the sins of men. But but Abel, in his faith was made righteous with God. His offering was done in faith. We heard last week it was that mixture of both sacrifice and faith. And when you put those things together, it's an amazing combination. That is godliness in itself. He offered up those things unto Abel. And we're looking at faith. Why? Because saints of God, you will not stand if you do not have faith. If there is not faith in your heart, you will not stand. I'm not talking about the faith that the people out there have. You know, we met a man on the streets one time, used to go robbing cars, had a little rosary bead kind of cross thing around his neck. He says before he robbed the cars, he'd kiss the thing and, and he'd just ask for God's forgiveness and he'd go rob a car. That's not faith. He says, you know, I loves the Lord. I loves the Lord, I do. I've heard it a million and one different times. Can I tell you, if someone's addicted to their drugs, they do not love the Lord. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Saints of God, the only thing that will help you to stand in this evil hour is by faith. Yes. That's the only way. 
way that we are going to be able to stand. And so God tells us in this portion of scripture, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And this just got me thinking, wiles, not a word we use often nowadays, but the English definition for the word wiles is devious or cunning stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. The wiles of the enemy is his way of making you do what he wants you to do. Maybe that is curse God and die. Maybe that is go back to your sin. Maybe that is steal from a loved one. Maybe that is not read your Bible. Maybe that is just leave your prayer aside. Maybe that is stop coming on Wednesdays, Fridays or Sundays. Maybe that's the devil telling you that you can move to the other side of the world and try find the church afterwards. The wiles of the enemies is the devil's cunning strategies employed to manipulate you into working in a particular manner. You know these advertising agencies, that's what their job is. Public relations, it's manipulation. They put up screens for new cars and tell you you'll have the happiest life in the world if you're just driving around the highway in this lovely new car. It is a gentle manipulation that comes in through your eyes. And so that's why God tells us that we must put on the whole armor of God, that we may stand against the wiles of the enemy. The devil, there's a target on your back, saints of God, and the devil will come to you at your weakest moments. He'll just tire you out, tire you out, tire you out, and then there you go. I heard it of a great man of God that has been accused of some level of compromise recently and the people that, that led him into that compromised position knew well what they were doing. They tired him out, brought him on a big long walk, first of all, big, big, big long walk. That he's an older man, he was very tired. By the time they talked to him, he wasn't able to put sentences together properly. He was very, very tired and this is what the devil does to us. He takes us at a point of tiredness and then he will come in again us. And you might say, well, how can anybody stand in that moment? By faith. By faith. You're not expected to do it of your own self. You're not expected to drink a spiritual energy drink against the enemy you are expected to put on the whole armor of God and I don't have time to go into every single one of these pieces of armor early on in this church's um, uh, beginnings Keith preached a whole message I'm sure you'll find a series I'm sure you'll find them there on the website if you haven't listened to it go back and listen to it it's good the devil wants you to curse God and die those are his wiles and he will employ any means necessary to do that saints of God the Christian trials, the trials of the Christian life burn hot and there's only one thing that's going to quench those flames. One thing that I've read of in the scripture, that's this shield of faith. That is this shield of faith. Why a shield? Why, sorry, why is faith described as a shield? Because I've never actually, you know, there's no place you can go buy a shield and then there you go, you have faith. Uh, the Apostle Paul here is trying, is, is pointing towards something natural to describe something physical to he is describing the armor of the Roman army of that day. As we all know, that was a ferocious force that took over most of Europe most of Europe and parts of North Africa and they were, they were uh, to be re an army to be reckoned with. They were something to be feared. Nobody would dare rise against the Roman army and part of this is how they protected their, uh, how they protected their soldiers. So as the Apostle Paul is describing the different elements of this suit of armor, he knows that everybody he's describing it to knows what these Roman uh, occupiers look like. Remember, these men were considered occupiers in every single country that they went to. And as he's talking to Jews and, what, and whatsoever, the, everyone looks at this army. They know what they look like. These Roman soldiers would be everywhere, standing guard. They would have their breastplates, their helmets, their shields, their swords, their shoes, their, their, um, their skirts around their loins, their tunics, whatever you call them. They had all of these pieces of armor and so the Apostle Paul is using this to preach a message. He's standing upon the Roman armor and he's pointing towards something spiritual and this shield of faith 
There is a difference between a shield and a buckler. A buckler is a small little, I don't know how big, maybe three foot in diameter or so, and that is used very much for hand-to-hand -hand combat to parry different um, attacks and things like that with swords. This shield that the Apostle Paul is talking about is massive. You're talking about something that one could hide themselves behind entirely, and then when the Roman soldiers came together, look, I'm not an army man, don't know the names of the squadrons or centurions or whatever, but there would be a number of them would come together Together as they went into the battle, they would butt their shields up against each other, put their shields on top, and then any forms of projectiles, missiles, arrows, javelins, they were protected from those things. We are talking about a massive thing, probably even bigger than this pulpit behind me. You could stand behind it and everything would be, would be uh, protected. Saints of God, that's faith. You're not expected to fight the enemy. You're expected to lift up your shield. You're expected to use that shield to stand behind it. And you might say, devil, I don't have all the answers for you, but I don't need them. The word of God says. You know, they weren't expected to try dodge the hours as they came in. They weren't doing gymnastics classes there up in Rome so that they would be ready to fight against these fiery darts. No, the, the, the generals of the Roman army knew it was a fruitless task to send these men with soft body tissue you out without something to stand behind. Can I tell you, even in all your greatness as a Christian, you are soft. You are made of very soft tissue. You should have no confidence in this flesh. Same with those Roman soldiers. They didn't have confidence. They do. They get hit with a fiery arrow. They're done and dusted. That's it. They didn't have the same level of medical science this day. And even if they did, when you're on the battlefield fighting the Gauls or the barbarians or the, the Carthaginians or any of these people, if an arrow goes through you and you're on enemy territory, you're done and dusted. You're getting left there in a shallow grave. And it'll be the same with you, saints of God, if you allow that the, the, the darts of the enemy come and hit you in this mortal flesh. You you try stand against that enemy. I've seen it before. I've done it my own self. You go out into the battlefield. Maybe brother might be saying, have you got your shield? Ah, I don't need it, brother. You know, I've been studying my Bible. You know, I'm all prayed up. I'm all ready to attack the enemy. And then those wiles of the enemy come in and, and brother Keith's just got his arm around you saying, told you you should have brought that shield. Told you that the full armor needs to be worn. Faith protects us, saints of God. Matthew Henry says, faith must be our shield. Above all, or chiefly, taking the shield of faith, this is more necessary than any of them, be meaning any other piece of that armor. Faith is all in all to us in an hour of temptation. The breastplate secures the vitals, but the shield we turn every way. This is the victory over the world, even our faith. We are to be fully persuaded of the truth of God's promises and threatenings. Let me read that again. We are to be fully persuaded of the truth of God's promises and threatenings, such a faith being of great use against temptations. Consider faith as it is evidence of things not seen and substance of things hoped for, and it will appear to be admirable for this purpose. Faith is like a shield, a sort of universal defense. This word faith comes from the Latin fides. It means to trust. It means confidence. It means reliance. It means credence. It means belief. You know, you might hear me standing here preaching about faith and maybe that's making you feel even worse. You think, I have little faith. How am I supposed to stand? Faith does not necessarily mean that you require great acts, but faith is a battle won or lost in this mind. It is a standing on the word of God. Simply put, if you have faith, then you believe what God's word says. If you have faith, you believe what God's word faith. I'm not looking to see if you've split the Red Sea here this morning. I'm not looking to see if you've raised someone from the dead here this morning. I'm not looking to see if you've done all manners of mighty works here today to prove that you have faith. You need to believe the word of God. That's what we need to stand behind is the word of God. And that faith, that promises. The devil comes in with his wiles, with his fiery darts. And all you have to say is, the Bible says devil. The Bible says devil. 
devil. The Bible says devil. I'm not going to get into an argument with him. You know, the American government's policies with terrorists is you do not negotiate with them. You do not negotiate with terrorists. You don't negotiate with the enemy. He might say, oh, well, that's a flimsy shield you got. No, the word of God is never a flimsy shield. There is no greater shield than the word of God, than the faith upon which we stand. And that is what we must stand behind. Saints of God, I don't have all the questions here for you today. Saints of God, we are hurting. We are in a dark patch. We don't have all the questions, but we do have what the Word of God says. Maybe we might be able together find answers through that Word of God. But before we ever arrive at the answers, God gave us His Word. And that's all we need here today. We don't need apologetics. We don't need great Moses acts with staffs turning into serpents. We just need to stand upon the Word of God, saints of God, and we need to believe it. Faith made Job say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Saints of God, Job said, I will maintain my own ways before him. Why? Job, curse God and die. Everything has gone away from you. This God that you worship obviously doesn't love you, doesn't care about you, if he even exists. No, that was not Job's thought process. Job says, I will maintain my own ways before him. Why? Because he had faith. He had faith. He believed that God is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Job knew that it was always too early to give up. Job knew that he couldn't allow the words of that, uh, that, that wife of his to get into his mind. Job knew that there were certain places that he could not allow, allow that mind to go. And while he sat on the ash heap scraping boils off, yes, he said he wished he died, but he did not curse God. And he did not charge him foolishly. And he did not go into sin, saints of God. He stood on the word of God because he had faith. What is faith? It's a belief that God is who he says he is. Why? Because he is. Simple as that. Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. It's as simple as that. He is the great I am. God is who he is, and we believe him because of his character. Do you know, even if you believe him just because he changed your life and made you born, born again, that's shaky ground, saints of God. You'll, you'll meet anybody on these streets and you talk to them, and you tell them how you got changed, they might have a story of their own. They might say, yeah, when I was in my early 20s, I was after rails, and I really got myself together. Or they might just say, fair play to you. If, you're, if your ground is that testimony alone, then you're missing the blood of Jesus. You're missing the word of God. We must stand on the word of God. Faith causes us to hold fast the profession of our faith without what? wavering. Well done, Ellen. Wavering. Faith causes us to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? For he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. Saints of God, we need to hear this today. Our God is a faithful God. Maybe things have not panned out how you have expected them in your own life, but he is faithful, that promise. Maybe there is a sin that so besets you, but he is faithful, that promise. It is always too early to give up. If you think you're unsavable here today, you are wrong. If you think God has not heard your prayers over the last two years, you are wrong. If you think that God's word is only correct in certain circumstances, oh God, help you you are very much wrong faith makes us endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ why so that the unbeliever may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory this is why we uh, we uh, this is why we endure hardness why did the Bible say endured hardness? Because hardness is going to come and hardness is going to need to be endured. But saints of God, there is a recompense for reward. There is a reward coming. We are looking towards Jesus coming back. Saints of God, it says above all, above all, take your shield of faith. Above all, take your shield of faith. Stand therefore, having your loins, loins girt about with truth, having your breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You know, you might be in turmoil of mind here today. You might have been in past lives. You want to know how to stop that? The shield of faith. God is able. Saints, I've had it in my own life. I thought you'll never get free of this sin you're too corrupt to ever be such and such God is never going to use you saints of God the word of God that says 
to deliver us. The word of God says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean? Our brother Keith here, he's an author. author. He has written books. I'm sure there's many books that he has began and has not finished, but there are books on all of our shelves at home that he has finished. Jesus Christ is the author. He started writing the book of your life, the testimony from before you were ever born. He started writing that book and Jesus isn't like Keith. He never leaves a book unfinished. Jesus Christ finishes every single book that he begins and he wants for his church to be the church to be his body here on earth by faith this word above all by which we're to take the shield it's the Greek word the Greek word above is epi it means above everything or upon it's where the prefix for that drug called epinephrine is from because meaning above your kidneys it's where your adrenal gland is above upon over that's what this word means and that's why we must take the shield of faith why because faith must cover these three things truth righteousness and the gospel if you do not have if you have those three things but you do not have them covered by faith then they mean nothing what does it say in the book of James that faith without works is dead dead faith I've met people go out onto these streets they just love evangelizing they're in prison now they don't have faith no real faith in those people that's a foot shod with the gospel of peace but they didn't have faith they didn't have anything else they stole those shoes from someone I'll tell you that much the breastplate of righteousness your righteousness without faith it's dead it's not in your Pharisee if you don't have a real life living faith that you stand behind you know why because you're going to use that righteousness to do, to parry the attacks from the enemy and if you're if you think you're going to be able to parry the attacks of the enemy with shoes you're very sorely mistaken if you stand on oh devil you know what I'm a good Christian because I go out and I preach the gospel morning and noon and night well I'll tell you that's not going to work that is shaky ground and if you say devil I'm a good Christian because I'm a righteous man I'm not like I used to be well can I tell you that's also shaky ground you are not righteous your righteousness is like filthy rags and of course we want to follow after righteousness but above all of these things it must be faith it must be faith and even truth truth is the first thing he starts with very 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 important you know, I spoke to Brother Dennis and he was telling me about work he did in China and how there was people that had been saved and many, many people had gotten saved over there. But he said so many of them went into air and heresy because they did not have truth. They got saved. They did not have pastors, shepherds, leaders. That truth is so important. And we live in an age of your own truth, don't we? Nowadays, people often say to you, oh, well, that's true to you, but not true to me. And this is my truth. And, you know, we can have both things. Islam and Christianity even though you simply cannot a Muslim cannot be saved and a Christian cannot be a Muslim it does not work they're absolutely incompatible we must have truth we must stand upon truth but saints of God more importantly we must mix that truth with faith because if we do not mix the word with faith what does it say it means that it, it they never entered in it says in Hebrews we see that they could not enter in why because of unbelief that's lack of faith they did not enter into the promised land, the Hebrews, because of unbelief. They did not believe God. I mean, they, they experienced great mighty miracles. They came out, they passed on dry land through the Red Sea, and yet they did not enter in because they did not have faith. They did not believe God. You think, I wouldn't be like that, saints of God. If you're left to your own devices, you'll be worse. I'm telling you, I know some of you, you're definitely worse than those people, 100%. We have no confidence in this flesh. That's who we are. And I learned that very, very early on in my Christian life. And I learned it the hard way. I had too much confidence in myself had too much confidence in this guy had to, to thought I could keep myself accountable I was very wrong you can't keep yourself accountable that's why there's churches you know I, I, I know a Christian man who evangelized on the streets doesn't believe that you should be part of a church and I know of a heroin addict who had spoken to this man and this guy was trying to tell it and this heroin addict knew, kind of tasted of the Lord before was in church and this man had said to him oh well you know you don't need a church and I don't go any church here and this heroin addict was saying man you know I really think for me to get right I would need help from people the accountability of a church that support 
that man's evangelizing. It's wicked. It is corrupt that you have an evangelist going out there and, and want, sending people to hell. I'm telling you, any heroin addicts in these cities, if they can do it themselves, they would have already done it themselves. But they can't. They need the Lord and they need God, Christ's body here on earth. There has to be that support. There has to be that accountability. You know, I loved when I got married. You know what? I live with someone 24-7. She keeps me right. She keeps me accountable. Maybe there's places in my mind I wouldn't go if, if by having her around. You know what? I loved it. I said it to Brother Keith. It was a relief to me when I got married because I thought, this is going to steady the ship. Young men get many sorts of strange ideas and, and, and just wives are very good at pouring cold water on them. Let's put it that way. Amen. It says that in Hebrews 4, the word preached did not profit them. Why? Was not mixed with faith. It was not mixed with faith. This, this, it says, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. In the people that heard it, they did not mix it with faith. I've seen it over the years. People come in, they'll sit down, they'll amen, they'll say, yes, that's right, brother. But you know what? They go their own way. They go doing their own things. They did not mix it with faith. I'm looking at the people who are mixing this word with faith as you're sitting before me. You know, you've made sacri here Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Takes faith to be here on Sundays. How do I know? Because I've seen people that have not mixed the word with faith and ergo they do whatever it is that they please whenever it is that they please and they're just led of the Lord and they just do what Whatever they want, you know, to, 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 to be led by the word of God, that's real faith. I've seen many people in this city, many men led of the spirit, and they're just doing whatever they want. And you know what? There's Christians that revere them for it. Oh, they're real men of faith. They're not. They're vagrants. They're vagabonds. They're, they're, they're middle class gypsies. They just drive around Europe preaching to whoever they want. They just love living a lawless life where they can do whatever they want. And they have a semblance of righteousness in Christianity because they get to read their Bible. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Can I tell you, very, very early on, I realized that the church was not an amenity. As a young man, you know, you want to move. Your friends are all living in different countries. It was at the bottom of a recession. It's like maybe 2000. 2011, 12, 13, and God showed me that the church was not an amenity. It's not like a little. You do not just move somewhere and then try find the church. If that's your thinking, then I'm telling you, money's your God if you did it for a job. Or if you did it for anything other than the Lord, then that's your God. Is a God not something that we sacrifice to? That word for sacrifice, as we learned last week, means sacred right. That's what it means. So when you sacrifice to something, you maybe sacrifice time for something or money for something. You're doing, you're honoring that thing. It's sacred right towards it. And saints of God, when you sacrifice to be here, when you sacrifice to fellowship with one another, when you sacrifice to rebuke each other, to love each other, maybe put others before yourself, then that is God in operation in your life. That's Jesus Christ having changed you. I'm looking at Brother Joshua, a man homeless on the streets with a light through his teeth to anybody just so that he could get a hit. But that man has slept in my house, slept in Rory's house, and everything was there in that spare room when he left. I can tell you that much. That man, I would trust him with my life. Why? Because he's been changed. He's a new creature. He is a new man, and he has new desires. Getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be with us while he's in Oklahoma on Sunday mornings, and Christians can't get out of their beds at 11 to be here on a Sunday morning. Oh, God, help us. But saints of God, you can, and you're here, and that's God working. Saints, that's faith. That's faith. You don't have to have a staff standing before a river waiting for God to blow his nostrils before faith. Do you know what? To be here for nine years in a row, every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, that takes great faith. That takes great faith. To, to sit. They weren't always nice. We all know it coming in on a November evening. It's lashing rain. Maybe you're tired after work. You wouldn't mind an hour nap. But you said, I need to be with the saints of God. I need to meet with Jesus. There's nowhere more important than I could be. We had to beat Rory out with a stick the day after his wedding so that he wouldn't come into the meeting. That is faith. Where would you want to be? It's to be with the saints of God, to be with the Lord. Faith without works is dead, saints of God. Faith without works works the dead but when there are works in operation mixed with faith mixed with the world that's the best cocktail that I've ever seen in my life that is something that we can stand behind saints it is used faith is used to quench those fiery darts of the enemy this is what Matthew Henry says has to say about fiery darts of the enemy <clears throat> Our enemy, the devil, is called the wicked one. He is wicked himself and he endeavors to make us wicked. 
His temptations are called darts because of their swift and undiscerned flight and the deep wounds that they give to the soul. Fiery darts by way of allusion to poisonous darts which were wont to inflame the parts that were wounded with them and therefore were so called as the serpents with poisonous stings are called fiery serpents. Violent temptations by which the soul is set on fire of hell are the darts which Satan shoots at us. I'm going to read that again. I don't think you're hearing me. Violent temptations by which the soul is set on fire of hell are the darts which Satan shoots at us. Faith is the shield which we must quench these fiery darts. If it's anything but faith, it's not going to work. And there's somebody going to be walking in here on a Wednesday night in flames because they didn't stand behind that shield of faith. They did not lift up the shield of faith and get every single body part behind it. Maybe they didn't stand shoulder to shoulder at their brother with their shield. Sometimes we're going to have to be like that, like that Roman army where we're just all going to have to stand in and say, do you know what? We're shutting some stuff down. We're lifting it. We're battening down the house hatches. Sister Hannah, shield on top, self shield in the front. Paul, Keith, everybody, we're going to protect ourselves from the fire. Do you know self-preservation is faith? That is protection. You know, people might say sometimes, oh, that, you know, if you, if you, if you recoil into self-preservation, that's not faith. Can I tell you, there are certain times that God is going to call you to a time of inactivity for the purposes of his glory and for his work. That is faith sometimes. It's not that you know, maybe sometimes you might have to put something aside in an evening and you might think that the faithful thing to do is go out there and to preach and to this and to that. And maybe it might be to go home, spend time with your wife. Maybe it might be to spend time with your children. Maybe it might be to spend time with the Lord, whatever those things are. Do you know, very recently, a friend of mine asked me to go on a mission trip to Malawi and I just did not, I did not have peace about it. He was all for it, thought it was a really, really good idea. And I just never at any stage, I, I knew it was a good idea. I wanted to go, and, uh, but I just did not have a peace. Saints of God, we were supposed to be leaving this week if we were going to go. I did not have peace about that, Brother Keith. And I remember ringing him and I felt faithless. Jeff, I rang him back and I just said, you know what, brother? I'm just, there were a number of circumstances that, that led me to believe that maybe I thought that this wasn't the right thing. Not with the people over there, but situations in my life. But you know, when I told him that, I thought, man, are you? You just I thought I was the guy who said to, to the to the wedding master you know I just bought a field and I'm tending to that field so sorry I can't make it I thought that it was the most faithless thing that I'd ever did do you know what I would have been cancelling that trip I would have been cancelling that trip if I was going this week there's not a hope I could do saints of God sometimes faith doesn't feel like faith but I know if I'm going to be taking two weeks off to do anything it should be spending time with my family it should be spending time with the Lord it should be slowing down a bit and seeking on the things that are correct. Saints of God, we've had a very difficult, tumultuous two years and we need to keep the main thing, the main thing. Isn't that right? That's what we have to do. We have to focus our eyes on the Lord and we have to get behind the shield for a time. There are pot shots coming. There are darts coming. You can hear them whizzing past your head. We need that shield of faith. We need to stand on the word of God and we need to do the simple things right. You know, they often say that about the New Zealand rugby team who are so, the best team in all of history of, of rugby and it's just because they do the simple things perfectly. They do very simple things extremely well and saying to God I don't care if we don't have a building like we were in on Thursday for that funeral praise God that they haven't but saying to God that's not what God has called us to the here and the now. He has given us the resources that we have he has given us the measure of faith that we have and he has given us provision for this point in time let us keep that in mind let us run our race well and let us keep the faith because that's what's important I don't want to be like that guy when asked of the, of, the, of the farmer, or was it the father, says to him, you know, will you do your work for me? Will you work the fields for me? And he says, yeah, 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 I'll do it. And then he doesn't do it. And then he asks the other son, and the other says, no way, I'm not going to do it. 
but he comes back and does it. Who does the will of the Father? And you know what? Sometimes this Christian life, we can be like an old cold engine. You're putting your foot on the accelerator, trying to get it going. And you might think, oh, wretched man that I am. But when that thing gets going and you're operating in third gear and we're going and we're walking with the Lord. Do you know when we first started doing the videos with that camera, four years, 50 to 100 views maximum. Can I tell you, it got worse before it got better. We were getting around 100, thought this thing was taking off and then just down and down and down and down. God's testing the hearts with all of us, wondering how long you're going to try that starter motor. How long until you ask someone to give you a push start down the hill? How much do you want to move on with the Lord? How much do you want to progress? How much do we want Christ to be dwelling and living in us? How much do we want to reach Limerick City? Saying to God, he's going to ask these questions of us on a daily basis. What cost? How much do we want to save these heroin dealers and heroin addicts? How much do we want to save our friends and family? He's going to test our love for the sinner. That's why the Apostle Paul tells us to endure hardness. It's not just for the sake of it. It's not just to say that oh, I've got a million scars on my back and I'm a fantastic Christian. No, it's so that we might obtain salvation for the unbeliever, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And you might get, to, you might get to, to heaven with scars on your back because of how people hurt you and all these sorts of things. But if there's a band of ten with you, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. If there are people there saying that I got saved because there was a man faithful to preach the gospel, there was a man who did not move. You know, the Bible says that we are tried like silver. And we know that to try gold and, and precious metals, you burn it in the fire. But you know how else you also try those precious metals to see what they're made of? You bite them. You've seen it on TV shows. With gold, to test its purity, you bite it because it's malleable. It's it, uh, real pure gold is soft. It's not actually hard. And so it's mixed with silver to make it soft. That's why you have 18, 24 carat or whatever. Silver, on the other hand, is extremely tough. Very, very tough. There are many different tests that the Lord is going to use on you to see if you're a vessel of wood, hay, stubble or silver and gold. He's going to do all manner of different tests. If the world in this hour have all their scientific tests to see if there's nickel present in different metals, God has far more than the scientists of this day. And he's got many different ways of doing it. And do you know what? They're uncomfortable. Not nice being squeezed, saints of God. I don't like it. I really find it terribly unpleasant. It's also not nice having a mirror held up to you to see what you really are. But you know what? When we're willing to accept that fact and we're willing to walk with the Lord and we're willing to hide behind the shield oh God help us then God's going to do something great saints of God do you know what it's not cowardice to hide behind the shield can I tell you that it's not cowardice to hide behind your shield of faith are you listening it's not cowardice if you just say the word of God says oftentimes I used to get myself caught up and not speak when all these evolutionists thought I needed every single answer no I just need to preach Christ and him crucified that's all I need to preach I need to preach about a savior who loved me and died for me it's not my job to convince them I'm going to try persuade them but it is my job to give a defense to give a defense and sometimes that defense is the word of God says and you know what might make people angry but you know what the preaching of the grass is foolishness unto them that perish the Bible says that the Greeks seek for a sign and I believe that we do be live in a Greek in our or sorry the Greeks seek wisdom people are always looking for wisdom always looking for God do you know what God doesn't care about wisdom God has already done it the Bible says I am that I am that's what God says I am that I am not I am because of thermodynamics not I am because of evolution praise God for apologetics but God did not say I am because of apologetics he says I am that I am it's up to you if you want to believe up to you if you want to have faith and believe faith is going to someday use that shield for defense but saints of God, the word of God is not only our source of faith, but it, the word of God is also our offense. There's going to be a time, there will be a time that shield is put down and we're taking the fight to the enemy. It's not all the time, but there is going to be a day we're going to get two-edged swords, saints of God. It's not like one of these samurai swords just on one time, far superior than that. Two-edged sword, we're going to take it and we're going to lop off the head of the enemy, lop off the head of the devil, or we're going to take it. All warfare is not always the same. Even the Roman army of the day had to defend themselves at times. Even that great Roman army that lasted for hundreds of years needed shields. 
and saying to God, there are going to be times we need shields, but that's not going to stay like that. There's going to be a time. It's like, like, like Peter, you know, he goes, he goes back a fishing and he stands there with Jesus. Do you love me? And then eventually Jesus says, when you're ready, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. He says, you use that sword to chop off Malchus's ear one time in a, in a flurry of passion, but you're going to use it to take the fight to the enemy someday. How The Bible says that, uh, no, I'm going to mess it up. One sends one to thousand and ten send ten thousand to flies. I can't remember the scripture. Should I have it written down? You all know the scripture. You know what it means. Saying to God, if there are fiery darts whizzing past your head, you need that shield of faith. You need the word of God. You need to believe God's word. You need to believe that he is. You need to believe that he did not bring you out to a desert to die here. And don't you ever put on your lips, oh, can God furnish a, a, a table in the wilderness? He can send streams in the desert. He can send quail coming out. He can send a pillar of cloud by day and a and a pillar of fire by night. Saints of God, fire by night. That's what I'm looking for. In the dark night, God's going to send fire. It's going to warm us up and we're going to stand by it and we're going to warm our hands, not by, the, not by the fire of this world, but by the fire of the Almighty God. Saints of God, our enemy, the devil, this is what... Um, this is what uh, uh, Matthew Henry says. Our enemy, the devil here, is called the wicked one. He is wicked himself and he endeavors to make us wicked. He endeavors to make you wicked. He endeavors to make us wicked. His temptations are called darts because of their swift, undiscerned flight and the deep, deep wounds that they give to the soul. Can I tell you those deep wounds are difficult, but fire is not only used as a tool of the enemy, but a tool of the Lord. Matthew Henry says that the faith is a shield which we must quench the fiery darts. Why did I read from Hebrews 11? Because by faith some quench the violence of fire. Wow, what a, what a beautiful phrase. Quench the violence of fire. You know, we often think of violence and we think of fists and throwing punches, but really violence, it's invasive. It comes in and violence doesn't care about who you are. We've all been there. We're all unsaved at some stage. We've seen street fights. You've seen things you wish you hadn't. You've seen violent acts that have, that have maybe scarred you and you just thought, ah, that's something I wish I hadn't seen. But by faith, we can quench the violence of fire. The shield of faith, what's it used? for to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy we think how does it quench him I don't know but I believe it by faith Amen. and that's an okay thing to say it's okay maybe it mightn't be forever and if you go look for the answers that's fine saying to God when you find them let's bring them together and let's fellowship around the Lord. Let's worship him. And saints of God, I want to leave us with this one scripture in Hebrews chapter 10. Please turn there with me. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and reading from verse 36. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will... I'm going to start again. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Saints of God, not before. We look for that soon, don't we? It's like I was a child. I used to ask my mom, could I open my Christmas presents on Christmas Eve? You're always looking for the promise first. You're looking for that gift first. But God wants to see your heart. After on the will of God, he might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he shall come. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure him, in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believing to the saving of the soul. Saints of God, we have to have patience in this hour. We must. It's always too early to give up. It's always too early to get upset with God. It's always too early to trust in your own flesh or trust in your own means. It is always too early. God is working within us a long suffering. He is working within us that long suffering to bear with things that we might see his glory manifested on this earth, that we might see souls saved, that we might see people changed. If brother 
Limerick Keat packed it in after five years and left, there wouldn't have been a Limerick City Church for Jason to come into. Saints of God, it is so important that we run this race and we keep the faith. You know, it's not an easy thing to keep the faith. And that's why the Apostle Paul says it at the end of his days. He says, I've kept the faith. You know, if it was something of note, he wouldn't have mentioned it. Or sorry, if it was something that was not of note, he wouldn't have mentioned it. Do you know what I mean? If he did not, if it was not something that, that was to be taught to the saints, he wouldn't have bothered mention it. Because insignificant facts we do not immortalize in Scripture. But for a man to run the race and say, I have kept the faith. I have not deviated. I have not changed. I have not changed course. I have run, ran, I've run well. I've ran for a crown incorruptible. Saints of God, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Saints, the promise is there, and God's not a liar. Let every, man, let every man be a liar, and let God be true. That's what the Bible says. God is not a liar. He's not in the business of lying. The devil is a liar. The devil will try and make you to change that word of God. The devil will try and make you soften your approach as, 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 as pertains to your zealousness towards the word of God. That's what the devil will do. God doesn't. Saints of God, we're going to have a point in time where we stand behind this shield. We hold up that shield of faith. We rally around one another. But saints of God, there is going to come a day where we're going to take that fight to the army again. We're going to go for the armies of the enemy. Bible says that the ch church is terrible as an army with banners. We're just going to mend the nets for a time and then we're going back out of fishing. We're going back out and we're going to bring in a mighty harvest of souls if we stay the course. Amen. Stand with me. Father, Lord, we glorify you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, and praise you. We worship your holy name, O oh God. Lord, we exalt you, O oh Father. Lord, we praise you, O oh God. Lord, we just worship you, O oh God. Lord, we lift up holy hands and thank you, O oh God. Lord, for this mighty shield, O oh God. Lord, to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy, O oh God. Lord, I stand on your word here today, O oh God. Lord, I preach by your word here today, O oh God. And Lord, we glorify you, O oh God. We thank you for your word, O oh God. O oh Father, Lord God, we are, Lord God, waiting expectantly for your word, O oh God. God, and we know that you do not tarry, O oh God, because your word told us that you do not tarry, O oh Father. Lord, we ask you, O oh Father, Lord God, help us, O oh God, O oh Lord, to have that shield of faith, O oh God. Lord, above all else, O oh God, we glorify you. We thank you in Jesus' name.